Michael Weathers is a high scoring guard from Oklahoma State teamed up with former Texas A&M Aggie John Walker and a lightning quick roster now at Texas Southern. Alex Barcelo began his career at Arizona and is now very much at home at BYU. So is former Purdue Boilermaker 7'3", Matt Harms. Many different paths, one common goal, win in advance in the big dance. This December clash is part of the preparation, and it's next on BYU TV. Happy holidays from the Marriott Center in Provo, Utah. Tonight, the Tigers of Texas Southern in town to take on the BYU Cougars. Good evening, everybody. Dave McCann and Blaine Fowler. It's the first day of winter, which means spring is next and the NCAA tournament. BYU has been building a resume. They've played six straight teams in the top 100. Now comes a team not in the top 100. was a bit of a concern for head coach Mark Pope. Yeah, especially after the game they're coming off. When you go on the road and you play against a ranked team and have a big game, there's that tendency to let down. And there's a tendency to let down when you look and go, oh, this isn't a top 100 team. But Mark Pope said this is a team that's coming into the Marriott Center with a lot of talent. They're long. They're athletic. And it worries him a bit. He was all about that in the shoot-around today, telling these guys they better have their heads on straight. Let's go back to the resume building, and we need to look no further back than Friday at San Diego State. Aztecs undefeated, ranked 18th in the country. A BYU comes out firing. Spencer Johnson with a three. That's Alex Barcella from deep in the corner. Cougars by 15 at halftime. Matt Mitchell comes alive for San Diego State. He was on fire with 35 points. This dunk ties the game at 61 but with 52 seconds to play Brandon Averett with the three-pointer Cougars hit six straight free throws down the stretch they stunned San Diego State 72 to 62 our impact players sure were an impact in that game they're presented by Brady Industries a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment Let's start with Alex Barcelo well he was phenomenal in that San Diego State game 22 points seven assists and seven rebounds that's crazy numbers on the road and he carried this basketball team as he has all season long he's shooting 61.7 percent from the field and 62.5 percent from three who does that every week we keep saying well he can't continue to shoot like that and all he does is continue to shoot like that it's ridiculous how well he's playing having a wonderful season. Matt Harms at 7-3, 10 points, 8 rebounds at San Diego State. Mark Pope telling us today he was dominant in that second half and big things are about to happen for the big fella. And where he showed his dominance was inside in the paint defensively. He just changed so many shots. 10 points, 8 boards. That defensive pressure was the big thing. 15 blocks on the season and and he's three times that number has changed shots as they've come into the key that's where his presence is really known averaging 9.7 points a game and shooting 51 percent if they can get him to start contributing on offense boy he's going to have a great season here now for the road warriors of texas southern michael weathers 23 points at st mary's we know how tough it is to score in moraga he has the knack to score wherever he is. Now, a 6'3 guard that really plays downhill. He can turn the corner. He's going to get to the rim. He finishes strong at the rim. A lot of strength. And uh, when he gets to that rim, he, he draws contact and goes to the free throw line as well. You see his numbers, 13.7 points a game, shooting 48% from the field. He's a very good rebounder from the guard line with five rebounds a game. John Walker, one of many. Tigers on the roster who found a second home at Texas Southern. Yeah, well, John Walker is a skilled big guy that can really cause matchup problems with his length. And you see how quick he is. Great quickness inside. So he can go down, work in small space, get to the front of the rim. He can go out and stretch a little bit out on the perimeter, averaging 14.8 points a game. And how about his field goal percentage? Almost 61% from the field. He also is averaging over five rebounds a game. Look at this schedule that these Tigers are on. We talk about road warriors at Washington State, then at Oklahoma State, at Wyoming where they won, at St. Mary's, at Auburn, here tonight at BYU, at LSU on Saturday. Next week at TCU, we told 
uh, Coach Johnny Jones, he should get a T-shirt that says the Athletic Budget Tour because that's what they're doing. He said, we are not building a resume. We are building a budget. Well, and they're building a budget, but they're also preparing themselves for league play because you go out and you fare well in these games. Your team is going to be battle-tested and ready to go in conference. They are the preseason pick to win the SWAC. Tonight's keys to the game are presented by Tim Daly Nissan. Let's start with the Tigers, Blaine. Well, Johnny Jones told us they have got to battle in the paint. BYU so big inside, they've been dominating. He wants them to scrap in there and control the tempo. And he's saying, we need to get out and transition and run, but we need to stop BYU from getting out and transition and run. That's a tough task. Mark Pope told us his keys are the same every game. Yeah, he goes, we have to rebound the basketball, and that's what we do well, especially with that size, and defend in transition. So he knows that this Texas Southern team wants to play with pace. They got to get back and get to the paint and defend. Those are the keys to the game presented by Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Our starting lineups are presented by Intermountain Healthcare, keeping the Cougs healthy as the official sports medicine provider for BYU Athletics. John Jones, Michael Weathers, Galen Alexander, Jordan Carl Nicholas, and John Walker, the starting group for Johnny Jones, was head coach at LSU between 2012 and 2017, an assistant at Nevada, now in his third year at Texas Southern. Starting five for BYU tonight. The Cougars are seven and two, four and one here at home. Brandon Abrett, Alex Barcelo, Connor Harding, Colby Lee, and Matt Harms. Mark Pope in his second season with the Cougars. 31 wins already, 108 for his coaching career. And these are, Blaine, what we're about to see, we got 10 guys on the floor, seven of them started somewhere else. Uh, and, and you just look at Texas Southern, for example, you got a kid from Oklahoma State, Georgetown, Texas A&M, Stephen F. Austin, and Nevada in their starting five. For BYU, Averett from Oklahoma State, Barcelo, Arizona, and Harms from Purdue. And these aren't just transfers, they're high major transfers. Our opening tip-off is presented by Les Olson Company, your office technology partner. And BYU controls the tip. They came out with so much fire at San Diego State on Friday afternoon inside a very quiet arena. Colby Lee goes to work, throws it in with the right hand. And he was very patient, waiting to see if the double team was going to come. And then that's what Texas Southern wants to do. They want to get down, beat BYU down the court, whether it's a make or a miss, and get transition buckets. Jones on the miss, and they've got a foul against the Tigers. And that'll go against Jordan Carl Nicholas, his first, setting an illegal screen. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not going to waste any time getting down the floor tonight. No, that's what they need to do. And, and, and BYU, we see what they plan to do. They throw it right into the paint to start the game, down into that post. But Texas Southern didn't come over and double-team Colby Lee, and he said, hey, one-on-one, -on -one, I'm just going to get to the front of the rim and toss this thing in. Averitt looks to Harms. Let's see if they single up Harms as well. Matt fights his way through the lane, draws some contact. He'll go to the line and shoot some free throws. Well, and we see first two times down the floor, BYU throws it into the post the first time to Lee, this time to Harms, and Texas Southern says we're going to play straight up and, and see if we can do that for a bit before we start throwing double teams and getting into rotations. Nicholas picks up his first. Alexander had his on the other end of the floor, and Harms drops in the free throw. Matt is a 61% free throw shooter, and he's two of 16 from the three-point line, and his head coach continues to remind us that he is a much better shooter than these early numbers indicate. And we watched him in practice, and we've seen it. He was just killing it in practice preseason and then hurt that ankle, and that kind of slowed his progress down. He's not, his shooting touch hasn't quite come back yet, but he's very capable. Jones. In and out, Harms on the rebound. Out to Barcelo. Bob inside to Harms. Can't stop that. And it's six to nothing, BYU. Harms with four. And, and Johnny Jones, head coach of Texas Southern, his, his worry is coming to pass here early where BYU is just dominating inside in the paint. Weathers, here's an open look for Nicholas. And Nicholas drops it in. He comes in averaging 9.6 rebounds. 
out of Stephen F. Austin. Finding a home with Texas Southern. Lee open for three. That one's too strong. Here come the Tigers. Good block out that time by Nicholas. Jones off the front end. And a reach in foul on Lee. As Walker made his move to the basket. Number one on Colby. And here's the, the lob feed inside to Harms. One bounce to gather himself and then the easy throw down inside. It's gonna be hard to front him. He's so long that BYU can just toss it over the top. Here's Walker on the drive and Harms blocks it and then tips it over to Connor Harding. And that's exactly where Mark Pope says Harms has just been dominating this season. He was so good in that San Diego State game. Drive into the basket. Colby Lee up and in. Harms will say I should get an assist for Does he that. get an assist or is that know. a shot? I'm not sure either. It kind of looked like a shot. Lee's got four. Weathers off the glass. You can see that's his where, touch. Yeah, that's where Weathers is so good. Their best win of the season. They've got just two, but they went over to Wyoming. He scored 21. They beat the Cowboys. Weathers sat out last year. Last time he played was in that 18 season. Played at Oklahoma State. At Oklahoma State averaged 9.2 points a game and 2.8 rebounds. So he was a solid contributor there. Averett up for his first shot of the night. And Alexander on the rebound and on the run. Gets it back deep in the corner. Works baseline. And Barcelo pulls down the rebound. This is not a good shooting Texas Southern team, and so the points they've got to get today are beating BYU down the floor and getting it at the rim. Yeah, they're, they're at their best when they're playing solid defense, getting out, creating turnovers, getting out and running, getting, the bat, getting to the basket and transition, or when they're attacking the basket in their half court. Harms off the glass. Matt has six. Foul on Jones a moment ago, his first. It's 10 to four for BYU. All those points coming from Harms and Lee. Points in the paint have been big in most games this season. Knocked out of bounds off the Cougars. Freshman Caleb Lohner checks in for Lee. And Yahuza Rasas checking in for Texas Southern. Walker up over Harms. And that's where John Walker can, can give you problems. He's 6'9", long arm, but he can take you out on the floor and spread you out and shoot it. Averitt answers right back. Averitt, tremendous quickness with the ball in his hands. Boy, what a three-pointer he hit at oh, San Diego State. Biggest shot of the game. It was the closeout three. Weathers. This is Walker. Drops in another. This is a three. Back to back. Walker. Came into this game four of ten from three, so five of eleven, shooting a good percentage from out there, over forty percent. Got five. And this will be a foul against Alexander. That's his second. Takes us to a timeout. Fifteen forty-one to go. Well, team still kind of feeling things out here on a Monday night. BYU by three on BYU TV. Lots of buzz in the heavens tonight. We're just after sundown. A look at the Christmas star in the southwest portion of the sky. This is Jupiter and Saturn aligned like this for the first time in 800 years, meaning we're seeing something tonight that no one on the planet has ever seen. And as our super cameras got up there close, you could see that, that had to be a, at were. least a 50 to one lens there. But yeah. when, you, when you're out there, when you were showing it to me on our way into the building, you know, it just looks like one glowing star with beautiful light streaming out from it. And when you look at it on, you know, magnified, like that's really cool to see the individual planets. Connor Harding drops in a three. BYU up 15 to nine. Answering right back is Alexander out of Georgetown. Transferred over, scored 22 at Oklahoma State earlier in the year. His first bucket tonight. This be an offensive foul on Caleb Lohner. Yeah, as he set the screen and then rolled, he, he turned into the player and moved. And so we've had one call like that on each team where the screen is, the screener is moving. 
Weathers over to Alexander. Driving on Loner. Kick out open three. And Richard Harward on the rebound. Good look by Alexander. Into Loner. Barcelo open for three. And that extra pass. And a wide open. Alex Barcelo. And a timeout called by Texas Southern. As BYU jumps up 18 to 11. But how about the ball goes all the way down to the baseline on that low block to Loner. He kicks it out to Harward, who's trailing. So it goes inside, back to the trailer, and Harward says, you know what? I got a 62% three-point shooter standing right here. Why don't I just give him the ball and let him knock this thing down? Very unselfish play and great ball movement in transition by BYU. For each three-pointer BYU makes this season, Mountain America Credit Union will donate 50 bucks to the American Red Cross. Our officials tonight, Del Carr, Tommy Nunez, and Scott Brown. Texas Southern at 2-4, and four, BYU at 7-2. Spencer Johnson is into the game now for BYU. And an offensive foul on the Tigers. That'll give the Cougars the ball back. And Alexander picks up his second. They've been consistent with that call. And you're going to have to be set tonight if you're going to go set a screen. Justin Hopkins checks in. And Alexander will check out. Spencer Johnson has earned a lot more minutes as of late. And the officials letting the collision occur, looking for some help. He's not getting any, and Texas Southern's going to get the ball. Mark Pope can't believe it. How do you, how do you not call anything? Is what Pope is asking, or a jump ball? And all three officials go, uh, let's just play on. <laughs> it's just there's a hard, hard nosed defense going over the top of the screen there. I couldn't tell whether he got a hand on the ball or or just the, the contact caused the ball to go, but and then they have a no call there. So it's kind of there's a little bit of a makeup right there. You could have called something on either of those. Back come the Cougars. Tigers knock it out of bounds. Let's go back and take a look. Coming over the top of this uh oh. Oh, here's that defensive play, and, and I don't know, because both both defenders went over the top of the ability of the offensive player to go vertical on that one. I would call a foul on that. Barcelo hits the three. That's going to count. There's a foul on Weathers of Texas Southern, his first. Barcelo is two for two from distance. Dialed in tonight as BYU extends their lead to 10. And, and BYU starts this game off 8 of 11. From the field that's 73 percent so let's watch a replay here and, and you see the shot comes off harward setting the screen and what they get uh weathers for is pushing harward with both hands to try to get out to the shooter shot was in the air so it's after the foul and byu gets the ball harward it rims out he'll go to the line to shoot too He's gotten very aggressive down at the rim these last few games. And now he'll go to the line and shoot two. So physical. And when, when you make contact with Harward, he'll spin and use that big body to his advantage by spinning off of that contact. Rasa picks up his first foul. And that sends Harward to the line at 50% from the stripe so far this season. But we saw him against Utah. Really settle in and take control. And he played a nice role on Friday against San Diego State. He seems to be finding himself. Yeah, he, he is really a force inside on both ends of the floor and looking comfortable from the free throw line here. 15 points and seven rebounds against the Utes. At BYU on an 8 0 run, they, they made five straight field goals. That was a five point trip down the floor with the three pointer and the free throws. And the baseline and up strong. Good looking move by Rosses. And, and for Texas Southern, they're, they're 6 and 12 now. They're shooting 50% from the field. When you're on the road, you're shooting 50% to start a game. You, you feel like you should be in it. They find themselves 10 points down because BYU is just shooting lights out right now. Harward. If he doesn't get a double team, he'll go to the basket. Double team comes, kick out to Harding. And Harding travels, gives it back to Texas Southern as Averitt's back in and Marcelo will come out. Harding made a ball fake and then slid his pivot foot and, and, uh, and picks up that traveling violation. 
Nicholas returns and Walker will sit down for the Tigers. Nicholas hands it over. This is Hopkins. Shot clock's at 14. Reedus back to Nicholas. Now the shot clock's at three. And Aver pulls it down. BYU's defense seems to have the Tigers a bit confused as to what they're trying to get done. Harward saves it out to Harding for three. And Connor Harding knocks it down. He's got six. And how about Harward with a couple of, assi of assists on threes? Just a little bit of going transition. He hands one off to Barcelo in here. Tracks down a loose ball and kicks it outside for an easy three. Jordan Gillum into the game for but the B Tigers. BYU's really increased the defensive pressure here. The intensity. Strong drive to the basket. Jamari Reedus, a sophomore out of Houston with his first two. 26 to 15, nearly eight minutes gone here at the Marriott Center tonight. Tomorrow night, BYU football. Wednesday night, we're up at Vivian Arena. More basketball as the Cougars take on Weber State right here on BYU TV. Harding into the lane, uses that big body, buys some space. He's got four. Harward on the bucket. Well, for Texas Southern, that continues to just be a tough matchup. It doesn't matter whether it's Colby Lee, Harward, Harms. BYU with so much size and strength down there, that Texas Southern just doesn't have that size to match up. Gonna have to double. Down on the block. BYU contending. And Rasis is fouled going up. So he's gonna go to the free throw line. First foul on Richard Harward. We got a timeout. 28 to 15. Cougars have started hot here at the Marriott Center tonight on BYU TV. Most entertaining bowl game in, in college football for a lot of years. This game, this matchup reminds me of those matchups. I, I think this could be so fun tomorrow. <laughs> Weather's going to be perfect. If Unlike the ice ball we were at the other night with San Diego State in town. If, if you're a fan, you're going to love this game. Like, I know there's coaches that love defense, but come on. Uh, offensive games are way more fun, right? Absolutely. And BYU's defense has a little... A little chip on their shoulder. Want to prove that that 14 points they've allowed all season long, which is number three in scoring defense in the country, is legit. Central Florida is allowing 31. Something's got to give tomorrow night with that. It's going to be a good one. Wyatt Lowell is in for BYU. So is Gideon George. And Matt Harms returns. Averitt trying to dribble out of some trouble. Slashing to the basket is Lowell, and a whistle, foul against Texas Southern, and it's up against uh, Gillum, his first. And Gillum, he was actually in a decent spot if he just sets his feet. He's probably going to take a charge there, but he reached and grabbed on uh, to Wyatt Lowell and picked up the foul. Lowell's a 6'10 sophomore out of Gilbert, Arizona. Years ago, the WAC freshman of the year at Utah Valley. And uh, trying to get a little more minutes and uh, adjust a little bit. Had that torn labrum muscle cleared just before the season opener, and it's been tough to catch up. Yeah, the, the hard part for him was because he couldn't, couldn't get going right until the, the team was ready to start the, start the season. He, he missed out on all those summer workouts, and, um, and he's you know playing himself into understanding what his role is just so late. Averitt for three. That one's off the glass and into the arms of Gillum. Into the basket, off the foot of Harms. As Hopkins made the drive, here's the foul. Well, no, the and ball off the foot. It'll be Tiger basketball, no foul. Into the backcourt. And Reedus has got it. Harms was saying that wasn't off my foot. Yeah, you said that was <laughs> that was off his foot. I thought that was off Hopkins' foot. Extra step by Racis. He turns it over. 10.37 to go. 
here in the first half. We'll have a crowd in the house at Vivian Arena, 1,500 fans on Wednesday as Lowe pops a three. His is off the mark. Looking forward to some noise. Any, any crowd at all will seem like a, like a big change and will be fun. It'll be fun for those lucky 1,500 fans that get to come, too. Ross is working around Lowe there to uh, clean Stan, it up. That's just great effort that time by Yahoo's Arasas, uh, averaging 7.6 points a game. But this guy had nine double doubles last year. Really active player. Johnson into the corner. Averitt under 10 to play. Averitt driving baseline with the one-hander. A moment ago, BYU was shooting over 75%, and we've witnessed a cool down over the last two minutes. It's good. It's good news when you cool down to 63%, <laughs> right? From 75%. 10 or 16 now. Mark Pope puts Barcelo back, and he wants to get it back up to 70. Kobe Lee's in as well. There you see the extra effort for Rosses. 29 to 19. And, and I really like Nicholas doing a great job of blocking harms out there. That allowed Rosses to get that offensive board and put it back in. Smart play. Lee waiting for a double team. Doesn't come. And uh, making the sell as Nicholas. And Colby picks up his second foul. Take a look here. I mean, there, there was context hard enough. Colby Lee's a big dude, but I don't know that he's that big. But, but uh, the key is when you're playing defense like that, you got to be in great position. He was in great position and, and took the contact and went down. Strong driver the basket process. Can't get it to go down. Harms is grabbing his ankle under the basket. Averitt on the other end for three. Drops it in. And Harms is down on a knee under his defensive basket as Averitt with five points. And he, went, he went hard after that. He was trailing and he went hard and came down on that left ankle. Let's take a look. And They've just stepped on the foot. He's had ankle issues coming into the season. That kept him out of the first few games and kind of kept him from getting a groove. Until as of late, we'll see if this is just a scare or we've got something serious going on. Yeah, there's, there's, there's two types that happen in basketball. There's the type is nice rising up over the top. Justin Hopkins knocking the, the jump shot down. But th there's the kind where you just kind of roll it. It hurts temporarily. You walk it off and you keep going. And there's the type that are more serious. That's what he had during during uh, camp getting ready to start the season. Cost him three weeks. Marcelo is finding room. One and a foul. Finishes the shot. He's got eight so far here in the first half. Three, two, three, you know, we've witnessed, we've called these Cougars now for about 30 years. And each season, the question is, well, who's going to be the scorer? And one always shows up. And this year, it is Barcelo. Averitt coming out with it. And a little reach-in foul as BYU had numbers down the floor. And Reedus picks up his first. And Reedus knew that if he if he didn't stop the ball there, that was going to be an easy bucket on the other end to transition a layup. So chose to reach hard and, and pick up the foul. Trevin Nell in for the first time for BYU as Averitt is at the line. And early in this season, uh, you and I were both a little bit concerned about BYU's free throw shooting. We thought, is this really going to be the trend? Are they going to shoot 55 or 60%? Or was it just that the wrong guys were getting to the free throw line? And as of late, they've been shooting it much, much better. And in that San Diego State game, they went 15 of 16 from the free throw line. That was a very big part of that road win against a ranked team. Including six for six in the last 45 right. seconds. Seven points tonight for Brandon Abram. His BYU high is 10 at San Diego State. Starting to see him get a little more comfortable in the offense at Utah Valley last year. And there's a travel. You watch Rosses take that extra step. And even he knew it. And then the whistle came and takes us to a timeout. 7.49 to go here in the first half. And BYU up 36 to 21 here on BYU TV. And by Waystar. 
Welcome back to Provo 36 to 21. BYU with the lead, 7.49 to go here in this first half. And they are hitting from distance, Blaine. Yeah, five of nine from that three-point line. And it's been because of great ball movement. And we know BYU is comfortable in hitting transition threes. They get out and run. This is a scramble three where Harvard comes up with a 50-50 ball and kicks it out to the perimeter to Connor Harding. And at BYU has is, is really moved the basketball well in this one. And so those three looks they're getting are wide open down the barrel threes. Barcelo with it. Nell, top of the key. That was some big shots on the road against the Aztecs. Into Harward. And a reach and foul against the Tigers. Nicholas picks up his second. Nine team fouls on Texas Southern. And Harward heads to the free throw line. I'm not sure he knew quite what to do. Harward usually will back you down and, and play with his back to the basket on that low post. He, he pivoted around and faced up that time and got the reach. BYU 7 of 8 from the free throw line. 7 of 9 to back up 15 of 16 as you mentioned That's a right. moment ago. And Fr front end of 1 and one's hurt though. A two, two point opportunity gone. Weathers moves in and fouls on Lee. That's number three on Lee, and he'll come right out of the game as Loner returns. And for this Texas Southern team, and it, I know they want to play fast, but they need to be a little more patient, especially when BYU gets back and stops that initial offense and transition. Be, be willing to make that extra pass and then attack those gaps. Rebound and a second chance opportunity by Hopkins. Loner pulls down the rebound for the Cougars. We heard Mark Pope remind the guys today during shoot around as Nell goes up for a three. Is the Texas Southern trailed Wyoming by 21 right. and came back and beat them. Here's Weathers who's still trying to get going here. Miss on the shot. Loner chases it down. And, and, and Abert went under the screen, so he left Weathers some room, almost saying, you know what, I'm not going to let you turn the corner, but I'm going to challenge you to make that outside shot. And Weathers gets back and swats the ball away from Barcelo. BYU has it under their basket. Mel hands it to Barcelo, who hands it to Harward, and that shot is blocked. Great hands that time. And that was Walker on the backside that got that. Walker, 6'9", junior out of Houston. Here's Weathers. Averitt goes down. Weathers kicked back. Rosses gets a friendly shooter's bounce. Yeah, ni nice job by Weathers to attack, get the BYU defense to go help on him, and then kick the ball back for an open shot. Rosses has got eight. That's a season high. Double team, and Barcelo's in some trouble. Reach in by Weathers, and the possession arrow will go to Texas Southern. And this, this is a nice little run by Texas Southern where they're playing with a tremendous amount of effort. They get this thing at 13 right now. And as you mentioned, there, there's a, a point of reference that Johnny Jones can use here at halftime just saying, hey, guys, if it's, if it's close, we've come from way back further than this at Wyoming, so no panic. Harding and Harms check back in. That's a good sign for the Cougars. Matt Harms, who limped off a few moments ago, is back on the floor. 36 to 23. Harms changes things inside when he's in there. You, you, you drive, and he's right there. And there's no place you can go with the ball. And on the switch, he ends up outside on Weathers. See if Weathers steps back into the corner. A three is an air ball by Brigham. Offensive board, another offensive rebound, and a shot clock violation because neither shot hit anything, and the Tigers turn it over. And that was Harms inside all the way there. The ball's inside right in front of the rim, and, and Harms is just, you, you can't get the ball up and over the top of him. Seven turnovers for the Tigers. He should get a block for that because of the shot clock violation. Like an air block? Yeah, an air block. <laughs> Johnson, here's Loner, up for a three. And this will be off of Harms. 
and out of bounds. And I was watching Loner there to see. He was wide open the first time the ball came through. And, and Tech Southern said, let this guy shoot a three. It came back to him. And, and he, he shot the shot. He needs to take his time. He just seems like he's rushing that. He's a very capable three-point shooter. Four of 23, and three of those threes came at Utah State. He just It just seems like he's just rushing every time he gets an open shot. Brigham on the drive. And Rosses has been the offensive weapon for the Tigers here in the first half. Johnson on the rebound. Marcelo chased down by Loner. Mark Pope telling us that Caleb Loner makes a lot of mistakes out there as a true freshman, but his ability to rebound buys him a lot of extra time in these games. He was huge on the glass at San Diego State. Yeah, big game rebounding against Utah as well. And that shot's going to come, and we're going to see some thunder dunks from him at some point. He's missed a couple. But we love the fact that he's thinking about it. Offensive foul by Walker. And for Walker, that's his first. 3.59 to go here in the first half. 36-23 Cougars. You're on BYU TV. Coming up at halftime, join Tyler Haas and myself, Spencer Linton, for your first half recap, including how BYU scored 29 points in the first nine minutes. That's pretty efficient, Tyler. Really efficient. They're shooting the ball really, really well and playing great team defense. I think that's why they have the early lead. And that's why BYU is leading by 13, still in a little bit of a scoring drought. Guys, take it away. Thank you, Spencer. They haven't scored in four minutes. Yeah, they're 0 for their last five, the Cougars are. And, uh, but... They can get stops on the other end, and that's how they, they maintain a lead. Even when they're having a shooting drought, they've held Texas Southern to one of their last eight. And so both teams on a bit of a drought, 38% from the field now for Texas Southern. BYU, who was up around 70% for much of this first half, is now down to 52% from the field on 12 of 23. Barcelo, top of the key, lobs into Harms, and Matt the turnaround shot is shooting down. He's got yeah, eight points. If he, if he catches the ball at that point, there's not very many people in the country going to have a chance blocking that shot. When he's 7-3 with those long arms and he's shooting it down on a jump hook, good luck. Weathers. Now he's dealing with harms. Starts to get him off his feet. Good looking move, and Weathers wins Boy, this battle. That's a heck of a finish right there. That is not easy. He's got four. Went right at the big guy and challenged him. Harms. Loner another three. This one is off. And until he can hit that, teams will give him that shot all day long. Hits a couple, then things have to change. <laughs> they change dramatically. Weathers again. Now he's matched up with Harms. Gonna take him. This time Matt seals him off, but slicing down low. Nobody's there to defend against Walker, and Walker's got five. Well, and, and Harms ended up on Weathers on a switch. And then as he was defending, the player that had switched with Harms lost track of where Walker was. Too easy. And, uh, and a nice move by Walker to find the open spot and go to the front of the rim. Wyatt Lowell in, and Loner's out. Lowell into Harms. Has his shot blocked, gets it back, and it's fouled going back up again. And Matt will go to the free throw line. Quentin Brigham, senior out of Fort Worth, picks up his first. Harms right now, three of five from the field, sitting at eight points right now, and he's two for two from that free throw line. Averett back in. Marcelo will come out. 2.23 to go here at the half. Our score box is presented by Brady Industries. Supplies and service for cleaning and food service professionals. Brady Industries, honestly, better. And harms in double figures here in the first half. Four for four. When you watch him from the free throw line, you, you start to understand why he's so dangerous and go out and, and shoot from distance. He's got really nice form and good rotation on the ball. Brigham hands it over to Walker. Chased down by Walker. And now it's Weathers. 
Johnson's assigned Weathers. Mark Pope really impressed with Johnson's defense. That's why he's getting more minutes. He's playing defense. Here, he fights for the rebound, and he's fouled by Rossus. That'll be his second. And we'll take the long walk to the other end. Well, and Avery came over late and helped out and delayed that shot. And then I think Racis thought, uh, man, I should have made that shot. He got a little bit frustrated and came over the back. How many times do we see that where you, you compound a bad play by, by being frustrated and going and making a foul when he didn't have position? Johnson at the free throw line. Sixteen points against Utah for his BYU high. And boy, he can stroke it from three. Yeah. Hey. Misses both free throws. And we've got a whistle and a foul. And he got what? He got Lowell for no, a lane violation. Oh, lane violation. <laughs> I thought he signaled that it was Yeah, I uh, thought it was a one. foul coming over the back. But, but he's he just, saying one more said, yeah, shot. One, he, gets a, he gets that one shot over ah. again. Marcelo back in. Connor Harding will come out. So now Johnson with a chance to make amends here. Salt Lake Community College after a church mission to Italy. And still can't get that first point to go down tonight. 40 to 27. Blocked by Johnson. Here's Harms up for a three. One-handed rebound for Walker. Now the Tigers are on the run. Harms just two of 17 shooting threes. And, B and BYU's been switching one through five. They're not afraid on the outside to have Harms go ahead and just switch and pick up the guard. Ross is on the rebound and put back. Double figures with 10. One minute to go. Lowell, lob for Harms. Beautiful pass. Boy, One great, big man to the other. Great recognition by Wyatt Lowell at that. He was up there looking to shoot it, and then in his peripheral vision, he saw Harms all by himself right at the rim, passed up a good shot for a better shot. That's a 6'10 guy finding a 7'3 guy. Dozen points for Harms. Strong drive to the basket and a foul. And Weathers will go to the line. Chance to complete the three-point play as Johnson picks up his first. Boy, Weathers, I, how he got that thing to the rim. Wyatt Lowell at 6'10", right there in front of the rim. Great drive by Weathers. And the reason they go ahead and switch, they'll, they'll switch out the, the four or the five onto Weathers because they know his game is is to come off of that screen, turn the corner, and go all the way to the rim. So why not leave a big guy on him? A lot of scoring potential with Weathers. 31 against Northern Kentucky when he was at Oklahoma State a few years ago. Had 11 the other night at Auburn. And he's got seven here in the first half. It's a 10-point game. Remember about four minutes ago, we were, we were saying that if they could just keep it close, keep it around 10, 11, 12, and they've been in familiar territory, they go into that locker room and say, hey, came back from a lot more than that at Wyoming and feel like they're in a good position. Stop here important for seven. Texas Southern. Seven seconds, six now. Averett open for three. Too strong, kept alive by Johnson, but he can't keep it and loses it out of bounds. 3.2 seconds to go. Inbounds to Weathers. And that shot is off as time expires. 42 to 32. BYU with the lead, looking to go 5 and 1 here at home and improve to 8 and 2. Texas Southern at 2 and 4 would love to steal this one in the second half. A BYU answer coming out of Friday's big win. Well, I thought they answered really well, but got into a little bit of a lull there, a little bit of a shooting lull. One more pass. The extra pass is what they need to make here in the second half, and those shots will fall. Spencer Linton and Tyler Haas are coming up at the break. 42-32 BYU here on BYU TV. 
Halftime at the Marriott Center, BYU with a 10-point lead over Texas Southern, 42-32. Third all-time meeting between these programs. Cougars off to a red-hot start, cooled down a little bit, and the Tigers doing just enough to keep it interesting. Welcome back to Studio C in Provo, Utah, alongside Tyler Haas. I'm Spencer Linton. Tyler, uh, before we get to the highlights, uh, you, you said that you were impressed with the way that BYU established their early presence on just how aggressive they were inside that opened up some three-point shooting. Right. I mean, obviously, from a matchup perspective, BYU's got the size advantage, and so they, they took advantage of that early on and went to Matt Harms, went to Colby Lee, got a few easy buckets inside, and that, that definitely opened up um, the outside shooting for BYU. A perfect segue into those first-half highlights as we look at BYU. Knocked down a few of their five first half three pointers. The first from Connor Harding because of the extra pass from Alex Barcelo. Right. Guys are playing unselfish and making the right play. Well, guess what? You give and you shall receive Alex Barcelo. We're surprised whenever he misses a shot at this point. He, he's pretty much automatic for sure. Here's another highlight Richard Harward inside, gets that shoulder on him. Nice jump hook. Then Brandon Averett, the hero, who hit that big-time three in the win against San Diego State. Finds the range in the Marriott Center as well. BYU scored 29 points in the first nine minutes. Yeah, they came out red hot for sure, playing, playing the right way. But How sometimes things go down. <laughs> Yahuza Rosas leading the Tigers with 10 points and got that friendly bounce. Matt Harms? Double figure scoring in the first half, Tyler. Really solid first half for Matt Harms. I expect him to be that, you know, be that second scorer for BYU. He's got to be a threat um, uh, continuing in this season. Our Deseret first half recap presented by Deseret First Credit Union. You know why we show how BYU shooting 48% to Texas Southern's 41%. The Cougars, as we mentioned, made five three pointers, but they were out rebounded by the Tigers 22 16. I'm sure that will be addressed by Coach Pope and staff in the locker room. But something you're not seeing on screen right now is BYU only turned the ball over five times. Mm -hmm. Had 17 turnovers against San Diego State, taking care of the ball tonight. Right. They're making really, really good decisions. And, and that's played a big role into why they've shot the ball so well the first half. They're, they're being really efficient. They're, they're making the extra pass. They're attacking the lanes and, and creating shots for their teammates. They're playing together. But really another point um, to make it on, was on the defensive end. I mean, they were making Texas Southern take really tough shots. A lot of their shots were falling away from the basket. Um, just played a really solid half uh, defensively. BYU trying to establish their inside presence, not just defensively, but offensively. We'll have more on that as our halftime show continues. BYU up 10 at the break, trying to get to 8-2 and two on the season following that big win against San Diego State. Don't go anywhere. Customers. Licensed promotional product vendor for BYU. Game day promos. Beyond sports, beyond expectations. Welcome back to the Halftime Show live on BYU TV. The Cougars up 10 on Texas Southern, 42-32. Once again, Spencer Linton and Tyler Haas back here in Studio C. We talked briefly about BYU establishing the presence inside with Matt Harms and Colby Lee. Let's show you how they did that now and what that meant for the Cougars shooting later in the half. Early on, if you have a 7-3 guy, Tyler... The game plan should be find him or find the 6'10 guy, right? Right, you go to him. You go to him early. Love that attack in the rim. That's what he needs to do. Some nice ball movement. Colby Lee inside out. Then I don't know if we should call this a pass or a shot. Definitely but a uh, pass. Okay, for the sake of Matt Harms, we'll call that a pass. <laughs> yep. Once again inside. And it's good this. physical play, and, and yep. he's going to be challenged this way. Yep. Going right at guys, though. And, and it, just to the rhythm and flow of the game, it, it, it opens up good three-point shooting. Um, and it, you know, just for the psyche of a team, right, you start and establish the inside game, have that balanced scoring. Um, you know, from the guard's perspective, it definitely opens things up and, and gives guys confidence. BYU's shot cooled off collectively. I mean, at one point, they were shooting 75% in the first eight minutes of the game, yeah. now down to about 48%. But the encouraging thing for Mark Pope and his team is the defensive energy didn't drop off even though the shot stopped falling. Right. This is a main focus for, for this team is, is not letting up on the defensive end. Whether shots are falling or not, right, 
the defensive effort has to be there. You got to stay locked in and stay ready. You know, the, the Cougs finished the half a little bit flat, right, on the offensive end, um, but their defense was solid. Um, and they're trying to put together a complete 40 minutes. They can't let, let up, and this team is not going away. You know, Texas Southern was down was down 20 to Wyoming and came back, and so they're not going away. Uh, BYU will have to play well the second half to finish them off. Yeah, down 21 in Laramie, win that game by two, and yeah. to date, that is Wyoming's only loss. The Cowboys are 6-1, and one, so mm -hmm. they've lived it, they believe it, and they're within 10 points. By mm -hmm. no means is this a runaway at all at this juncture for BYU basketball. All right, we'll get back now to the Marriott Center. Dave McCann and Blaine Fowler will have the second half of the Tigers and Cougars coming up on BYU TV in just a moment. Learn more about setting up a private tour at trioorum.com. Back inside the Marriott Center at halftime, BYU with a 42-32 lead on Texas Southern. We welcome you back in, Dave McCann and Blaine Fowler. This is a good test for BYU because Texas Southern feels like about half the teams in the WCC. Yeah, and they've been athletic. They attack when they turn that corner. They come off those screens and they attack you. And, and I love the way this team has played physical, a little bit like St. Mary's where they're yeah. physical in the paint. And BYU struggled. They've given up eight offensive rebounds in that first half, keeping this team off the glass when BYU gets into the rotations. Winter solstice today, so on the shortest day of the year, let's focus on the tallest guy on the floor, Matt Harnes with a dozen. Well, he got a really good start to this game. Here, Alex Barcelo finding him with a lob and the dunk on, on the backside. And then we saw the little uh, jumper, jumper off the glass from the angle left. Uh, he had a beautiful jump hook. He's been solid defensively changing shots and then we were all a little bit worried we're all holding our breath we're going oh no not another ankle injury and uh, he got up walked a little gingerly but came back in the game and did did this little jump hook from the baseline impossible to block there it looks like he's running fine so it was one of those we talk about where you roll it it hurts for a minute you walk it off and then you're fine that was good news for Matt Harms you see his numbers four of seven from the field I, I love the fact that he's four for four from the free throw line if your big can make free throws, um, he's going to get fouled down there if you're lobbing it in. And for him to be able to convert from the free throw line is big. Mom's watching over in Europe tonight. And good to see her son uh, up and at him after that uh, twisted ankle and leading the way for BYU with harms. He scored the Cougars' last six points of the first half. And BYU with the ball to start the second half and a 10-point lead. Lee has been slowed with those three personal fouls. He's at work down on the block, hoping for the ball. Now he's got it in three-point land. BYU started this game off by going down and getting the ball into the low block and, and scoring down there. Avert misses on the open three. Colby Lee's effort wins back the possession. Now it's Barcelo off the glass and in. And that was like, that was like a dance move down there on the bottom. One foot, then one direction, then the other, and he, and he tosses it in. That was a beautiful body control move by Alex Barcella. Alexander over Harding, and Avery chases it down. A good job of getting back that time by Texas Southern. Five guys back to the paint in transition. Lee hands it to Barcelo, trying to shake Weathers. Get some help from Colby. Now it's Averett into Harms. Kick back, open three. That extra pass, this one left on the front end. They'll try it again. It's Barcelo off the left. Another look, and it's Averett. And the foul. Three shots at the rim on the trip down the floor and a chance at a three-point play. Well, in that first half, Texas Southern had an 8-4 advantage in offensive boards, and in one series down here, BYU closes that to, with three offensive boards. And if you can't make two open threes from the perimeter, then get one the old-fashioned way as Avery gets fouled and gets the make. He'll get a chance to make it three here. Nicholas picks up his third foul. So Averitt with 10, Barcelo with 10, and Harms with 12 to lead the Cougars. Now back up 15. Well, Texas Southern advantage uh, in, in the paint in that first half on the offensive glass. They also got after it in terms of points in the paint. 
We th thought BYU would dominate in that area. 18 points in the paint for BYU, 16 for Texas Southern. They were at their best when they were attacking and getting BYU into rotations. 20 on the shot clock after Harding hits the ball out of bounds. Here's Jones, the coach's son, has it taken away by Harding. Barcelo, Averett gets it back. Back to Averett, up for three. And Harms with the foul. And Harms picks up his first. He looked over at the official as if to say, I'm 7-3. <laughs> I was just up where the ball was and, and all, all Mark Pope did was he clapped and said you're all right You're all right. That's fine He, he loves the aggressiveness that that 7-3 guys running the floor and trying to get that offensive board back out to his team Jones Throws it away Alexander was making his cut and the Tigers give it back to BYU yeah, Alexander zigged and then they thought he was gonna zag on that one. That never works out well, does it? if you zig when they think you're gonna zag it's always a turnover. 11 turnovers here tonight for the Tigers. Boy, lots of maneuvering away from the ball. Harms hits the floor. Nicholas makes his case, but he's getting assessed his fourth foul. Yeah, and Jordan was trying to beat Harms down the baseline, and they collided on the baseline, and he gets called with a foul. And off the bench, Yahuza Rasas and Nicholas will have to come out with the four fouls. Frustrated march to the bench. And Rasas was the leading scorer in that first half with 10. Stolen away by Weathers. Lays it in. And nine now for Michael Weathers. So 10 for Rasas led them in the first half, and now Weathers with, with nine, the two leading scorers for Texas Southern. Left open for three. Knocks it down. 13 points now for Averett. A season high. Look at his career high, 23 against Grand Canyon back when he was a Wolverine at the University of Utah Valley. Good effort by Harms. Harms gets it back. Now Harding. Harms. I, I love that Harding. I, you can't tell me Harding wasn't aware that Harms made an extra effort to save that ball down on the baseline. Then the big guy ran the full length of the floor, and Harding was determined to get Harms a shot that time down. I love it. 14 for Harms. Rosses is fouled on the reach by Harding. BYU on a 10 to 2 run here to start the second half. Harward and Loner return for the Cougars, and Gillum's back in for Texas Southern. We see Harms doing work down that baseline and in that little left-handed jump hook that's impossible to block Step back three for Alexander And Loner chases it down Harding lobs it to Harvard Ball knocked away by a flying loner as they collided into each other. Here comes Weathers. And a foul on the putback attempt. Hey, huh? And this will go against Loner. That's number two on Caleb. Well, you see great body control by Weathers on this one, getting it up on the rim. And Loner coming over the back as Alexander in great position, trailing in transition there to, to clean it up and get a putback. A loner foul. Johnny Jones signed Alexander when he was at LSU his last year. And then Jones was out. Alexander went to LSU and then to a junior college and then to Georgetown. He said he had a great relationship with him and his family. So when the opportunity arrived, he had a chance to bring him to Texas Southern. BYU's got a few kids that followed Mark Pope. That's right. And would follow him around the globe if they had to. And Alexander, he was a top 100 recruit coming out of high school when he signed with LSU. Played a half a season at LSU and a half a season at Georgetown. Harvard and the foul. Spectacular pass from Barcelo. And Harvard will go to the line, a chance at a three-point play. Well, pick and roll. Harvard came out and set the screen for Barcelo and then rolled to the front of the rim. 
And as you mentioned, that's just a beautiful pass. And Harwood finishing strong through the foul. Watching uh, Chris Burgess coach with Matt Harms on the sideline. We have a 6'10 guy and you got a 7'3 kid all ears because the 6'10 coach knows exactly what he's talking about. That away from our cameras, but the education of BYU's big men by their big coaching staff continues. The Cougars have opened up a 20 point lead with 15, 54 to go here in the second half on BYU TV. Our BYU Sports History Showcase is brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Go back to Friday and that historic win at 18th ranked San Diego, the first ranked win versus a non-conference opponent since 2007. Jimmer Fredette was a freshman back then. Mark Pope was in medical school at Columbia. And the iPhone, the very first one, was introduced. Last true road win against a non-conference ranked opponent 1981 at number two ucla and poly pavilion danny Ainge and company ibm launched its first pc raiders of the lost ark that's my show right the there theaters raiders of the lost ark look is at my this. jam this is what mark pope looked like way back then that's his that's his id card from <laughs> medical school he looks a lot like travis hansen if you study it just right wow. but uh yeah now he's he decided, so he, I want to be a coach. He's in medical school. He decided to be. I don't want to be a doctor. I think he made a good choice. <laughs> he did for BYU he's, and he, all of Cougar Nation. He's a smart sure. guy and a tremendous basketball coach. He really is. Weathers at the line. It's it to go. How about Mike, Mike Leach, um, who was here as an undergrad at, at, at BYU and, and uh, a volunteer assistant to work with quarterbacks. He goes to Pepperdine and goes to law school, finishes law school, and says to his wife, you know, I, I don't really think I, after we just spent all that money, I, I think I want to coach football. <laughs> Can you imagine that conversation? Fortunately, it's worked it's out. It's worked out great for both of these guys. Loner left open on the baseline. Fight for the rebound, and the Tigers carry it out of bounds. So BYU will keep it. Salaries weren't anything like what oh, they are today no, no, for these head coaches. No, no, and... and yeah, when Mike Leach decided he wanted to do that, that, that wasn't a great way to make a living back then. It's worked out great for him now in the SEC and in the Pac-12. Wow, great, great ball movement as Harward flashing to the ball um, and, and Barcelo picking up another assist. Barcelo now with six assists and ten in this game. Harward's got nine points. We got a bump and a foul on Barcelo. Should we start? Are we on double-double watch now for Barcelo? He's, he's double figures with points with six assists can he get to 10 in this one one would think if he stays on the floor long enough Reedus runs out of room throws it to Johnson now it's the Cougars three on two loner and an offensive foul loner got that ball just at the wrong spot at a full gallop and in position was Gillum and the Cougars turn it back over. Yeah, and credit to Gillum because he, he saw the, the transition come and he sprinted back into the paint and got a spot and established himself there to take that charge as a hustle play by Gillum. Third foul on Loner. Barcelo calming him down, saying, We're okay, it's okay. As they settle in the defense. Gillum backs out on Johnson. Walker got a good open look. Now Barcelo all the way in. In the corner, Nell for three. See, Nell's got to make that get him. Yeah. If he's going to get that double double, that would have been assist number seven. Let's see if Walker is going to, he'll pass on this three. Process. Oh, great job. Ball fake, ball fake to. to Clear himself some room and was very physical down there, right over the top of Loner. A dozen points now. Six minutes gone here in the first half. Now it's to Barcelo. Loner, a 
the glass for his first two, and Harvard with the assist. And Harvard recognized where the help came from. It came right from the baseline, so he knew that Lohner on the other side of the paint was going to be wide open if he could get the ball to him quickly. Great read of the defense by Harvard. Lead back to 20. Reed is looking for a lane. Rosses runs into Harward and then loses it out of bounds. So they allow the contact. And this time it favors BYU as Averett returns. And Johnson, or Barcelo correction will come out. Well, could have called something on that. But they've had a few where they've just kind of yeah. let them play tonight. Loner. Harward. This time he throws it down with some authority. And remember, this is how BYU started the basketball game. They went right down to Colby Lee, and the next time they went down to Harms, and they established that dominance inside, got away from a little bit as the half closed out. They're back to it here, and it's paying off big time. Double figures for Richard Harward. Shot just not going down for Walker. Johnson. Here's Loner left open for three. That one was way off. And Rossus brings it out. BYU has the same number of points in the paint in the first eight minutes of the second half as they did the entire first half. Reedus. Rossus. And he knocks down the three. Just the second made three of the night for Texas Southern. Double team comes around the horn they go Loner into the lane slotted wow, what a block blocked by Walker shot clock doesn't reset go right down low and a whistle a Foul against the Tigers Averitt goes right into Harward and Rosses picks up his third <laughs> 15 points 10 rebounds for Yahuza Rosses. So double, we we're talking about double double watch. Rosses has one now with 15 and 10. Wyatt Lowell offers a three. Nine double doubles last year. Chalk one up for Rosses this season. Here's Weathers into the lane. Good looking shot. So strong and so determined as he turns that corner. The backboard trying to get it to Harvard. And this will be off of Averitt out of bounds. Takes us to a timeout, 11.26 to go. It's 61 to 44. And Richard Harvard making his presence known. Down in the paint, throwing it down here on BYU TV. Be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. BYU Basketball on BYU TV is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare. Always here for you. Deseret First Credit Union. You know why, we show how. Tim Daly Auto Group. Serving Utah since 1968. E-Assist Dental Health Education Foundation. Learn more at visityourdentist.org. And by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Carl G. Mazur building with the deer out in front. Across campus here at the Mary Center. BYU leads at 61 to 44 with 11.26 to go. BYU shooting 47% from the field and Texas Southern at 42%. Now remember when that was 75% for BYU and, and in the low 30s for Texas Southern. They they certainly, even though BYU's extended this lead, have, have not given up in this thing at all. They continue to scrap and fight, continue to attack with this guy, Weathers. Weathers from the free throw line, tapped out, and Averitt's got it. Lowell hands it to Harward. Backdoor cut 
Averitt. Now he gets it back. There's Johnson into the lane. Too fast are those hands of Texas Southern. And Weathers draws contact. He'll go to the free throw line. Chance for a couple. As Barcelo gets up off the bench, ready to check in. Fouls on Averitt. Weathers with the steal on the other end and then taking it right at Averitt. Weathers now with 13 points. He's 5 of 8 from the field and 3 for 3 from the line. First foul on Averitt. We've talked about it in, in each of our broadcasts from the Marriott Center. This is such a different animal when the students are here and yeah. the band is here. And the, the, the home team's runs are a little a little longer and the visiting team's runs are a little shorter when you got 20,000 in here. Sometimes you're sitting here and the church isn't even this quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Both go down. And Weathers with a quiet 15. 15 of the Tigers 46. Rosses and, and Weathers, the reason the Tigers are still around. Harward dishes to Barcelo. And here comes Texas Southern on a 7 0 run. BYU's missed their last four field goals. Brigham slicing to the basket. And Harward cleans it up, hands it to Averett. Averitt just takes a tour of the defense, brings it back up top. <laughs> he does a really nice job. When he gets all the way to the baseline like that and uh, trying to do a little bit pick and roll is Texas Barcelo. Southern. That, that's what they want to do. They, uh, turnover from BYU, and they beat BYU down the floor and get an easy transition bucket. Walker with seven after the turnover by Barcelo. The lead down to 13. It was 20 a moment ago. Marcelo into the corner, wide open, Harding for three. Now the shots aren't falling, and the hustle plays are going to the Tigers. 9 nothing run. BYU really struggling from three, and they've had some really good looks from three in this ballgame, open ones like that one. Uh, Barcelo setting up Connor Harding. BYU just 6 of 23. That's 26% from three in this ballgame, and this is a team that typically shoots much, much better from three-point land. Come into this game averaging just under 37% from three. Number two on Averitt, Lowell, and Harward are out. Loner's back in with Harms. And where, uh, Lane, as you mentioned a moment ago, where BYU has established himself in this game is down in the paint. And uh, with Harms back in, we'll see if they go right to that area for some more. It points in the paint. BYU with 32. 16 of those here in the in the second half. Hopkins gets them both to go. It's 11 point. BYU lead. Marcelo leaves it for Loner. Harding's got it deep in the corner. Back to Harms. On the rebound, Rosses, here come the Tigers. They continue to get stops. And no, Rosses pops a three. Weathers on the rebound, and he puts it in. Offensive boards, and that's double digit, 10 offensive rebounds now for Texas Southern. The easy putback. 13 in a row for the Tigers. And a reach in foul. This will go against Weathers. 8.38 to play. And uh, this 13 0 run by the Tigers, very reminiscent of what they did over in Laramie to upset Wyoming. Weathers now with 17 points has been the, the, the guy that's led this comeback. Into Harms. Gets his own miss. Goes up again. Boy, they are really letting them bang down low. And out come the Tigers with it. BYU missed their last eight field goals now. 0 for their last eight, two of their last 11. Boy, Alexander with a three, not the shot that uh, Johnny Jones was hoping for. Averitt for three. And he ends the 13-0 run. 
with a big three-point shot. BYU bench trying to create some energy. Averett with 16. Lead back to 12. Weathers throws it away. Went up. Had three Cougars around him and tosses it away. 7.46 to go. Averett with a three. Get BYU's offense back to life. They're up 12 on BYU TV. Our play of the game presented by E-Assist Dental Health Education Foundation. Reminding you, dental cleanings are essential for your health. Nice entry pass by the freshman Caleb Lohner. And a dunk by the big man, 6'11", junior Richard Harward. Our assist of the game. Leading to the dunk of the game so far. Well, and that when BYU's had good ball movement, they've got they've been able to get good shots. So that one started in the right corner. It came out and around the horn, and then the Texas Southern defense wasn't in a good position, so they could get that entry pass because the quick passing on the perimeter. Now some pressure from the Tigers as Reedus picks up Barcelo. Averett gets it back from Loner. Now Barcelo with it. Inside to Harms. A tie-up on the pass, but a foul is called on Quentin Brigham. And that'll be number two on Brigham. Boy, as soon as they doubled Barcelo off of that ball screen, Harms dove to the basket. Barcelo knew where he was and got him the ball. Like we talk about the officials letting them get after each other. Each team with just three team fouls with 7.31 to go in the game. They're six and eight. I read that wrong. But no free throws yet. As Harding pops a three. He doesn't need the free throw line. He's a three-point line. And Averitt with the assist, the penetration, and the kick out to the corner. Harding's got nine. Tigers answer quickly. Beautiful shot by Hopkins. And Hopkins with six. We near the seven-minute mark. Harms. Can't stop it down there. And Harms with 16. And Harms, very efficient game. He's 16 points on 6 to 12, 4 for 4 from the line. This time driving on Harms is Walker. And Harms picks up the foul. That'll be number two on Harms. 19 fouls now on BYU. And just six on Texas Southern. So this, this is this is still a one and one. Next team foul for BYU will be two shots for Texas Southern the rest of the way. Walker 60% from the free throw line on this young season. A lot of injuries last year. And his coach said, you know, if anyone benefited from the COVID situation, because they had to be shut down for yeah, a while, and he, it was him. He needed time to get healthy, and he started his career at Texas A&M. Very special talent, skilled mismatch guy with great length that can go outside. He's got nine. Averett's up for a three. That's too strong, and Reedus brings it down. Talking about COVID, we got Pacific, who shut things down. San Diego has shut things down in the WCC. BYU's supposed to be at San Diego. Wow, January how about early. that pass? Walker with 11. And that was Brigham with, with the assist, but great ball movement without the ball by Walker. Well, how about the pass by Brigham? Harding in the corner, lobs for Harms. Tipped up, brought back down to the Tigers. The foul on Loner, that'll be number four on Loner with 5.58 to go and still an 11 point game. And Harms on that pick and roll. They've had that all day long. Harms, got, has, when he's that close to the rim, he's got to be able to finish. And Lohner picking the, picking up that rebounding foul on the miss. Let's talk about that COVID situation. So San Diego and Pacific are currently shut down. The Tigers have already canceled their January 2nd conference opener against Portland. USD canceled tonight's game against Arizona. They're supposed to host BYU on January 2nd. We'll see how that goes. And so far, 11 bowl games have been canceled. And now we're, we're learning the Music City Bowls on thin ice tonight because Iowa has shut its football program down. And, and you know, we just got to be grateful just about any time that a game actually happens. Yeah, you get to, yeah actually, that when you get to play. And 
And of course, the, the WCC with a lot of teams in the state of California is having a huge surge in COVID cases right now. So yeah, who knows how the yeah. league play is going to go? Anybody's guess. It's a nine point game after Brigham's free throws. Barcelo back to Averitt. Open for three. Got it. Averitt with 19 points. 12 point BYU lead. He's been the one to hit the three to answer these well, little runs. It, it, but, and Averitt is four of 11 from three. Six of 14 from the field. So 11 three point attempts from Averitt alone. And mm. he, he's the one that's been open and he's got the green light to shoot him. They have done a nice job keeping Barcelo busy and not open. And uh, yeah, Barcelo with only eight shot attempts. He's four of eight, two, three from three. But when Barcelo comes off those screens, they're they're hedging hard or doubling him coming off the screens. And Averitt's been the beneficiary of being open on the backside. Alexander, shot clock's at five. Slicing to the basket, down too low and well defended. And a shot clock violation. Hopkins was in there, but nowhere to go with the ball. He's saying I hit the bat, I hit the rim because I pounded it into the rim underneath. <laughs> but he's not going to win that argument. 16 turnovers for the Tigers, and they leave Averett with just enough room. The basket and the foul, and he'll go to the line. And Texas Southern, for the most part, has been good about getting back. That time, a little bit of a lapse, and Marcelo got the ball immediately, advanced it up the sideline to Averett, and he just beat this team. You see. It, Standing around that time for Texas Southern, and that, that's not been the case most of the night, but Averitt beats him to the front of the rim that time. Third foul on Quentin Brigham, and Averitt at the line with 21 points. Tap by Gideon off of Averitt, and here come the Tigers. Under five minutes to go. Reedus. Wide open look for Hopkins. And we got whistles in the battle for rebound position. And the foul's going to go against BYU. Gideon George picks up his first. And at the line is Galen Alexander. This is a team pick to win the SWAC. We mentioned that. We will probably see them in the big dance as long as we can get to one. And uh, they they planned on winning their conference tournament last year. Got won their first round game, and then COVID shut everything down. And Johnny Jones telling us today that was the worst day of his life as a coach, sitting in the locker room saying, guys, the season's over. There is no more. He said, especially for those seniors that, that weren't going to be oh, back no, 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 no. to say, hey, we know you dreamed about playing in the NCAA tournament and, and the, his team was playing well enough to win that conference tournament and get in and then to say to seniors, hey, sorry, there is no NCAA tournament this yeah. year. That was a tough thing. And of course, Mark Pope had the same thing with his senior-laden team after the WCC tournament. Averitt up again. That was just a different gear. He got <laughs> to the top of the key. And he, and he shifted from fourth to fifth and just blew by people. Ties his all-time high of 23 wow. points. That such great position defense that time by Harwood to stay in front that time. Barcelo loses it, plowing into the lane. Here's Weathers. And Weathers not easy to stay in front of. Harwood did it last time. This time he dishes to the corner. Brigham for three, bouncing around. And Barcelo's out with it. George, ready to post up. A couple of looks at it from Harwood. George taps it out. 20 on the shot clock. We're under four to play, and Averitt's got it. Averitt waits for Harwood down on the block. No help defense coming, so Harwood to Gideon George. And George with the double jump yeah, puts he, it in. Even with the hesitation, definitely didn't shoot that in rhythm. <laughs> but I think he thought to himself, wait a minute, can I possibly be this open, this close to the rim? Gets his first two of the game. Now Brigham over Harding. And Harward on the rebound. Harward now with five boards. 11 points, four of six from the field. We 
arrived at three minutes to go. Weaker State at Vivint Arena on Wednesday night. You can see that live here on BYU TV at 7 Eastern, 5 Mountain Time. Averett for a career high. Got it. With a three-point shot, 26. Before that bucket, you got to go back to Utah Valley when he had 23 against Grand Canyon. So Averett's making some history tonight. And Weathers with a chance to convert the three-point play at the free throw line. That's where he will be when we come back. 2.38 to go. 81-63 Cougars here on BYU TV. BYU basketball on BYU TV is brought to you by Brady Industries. Honestly better. Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. Les Olson Company, your office technology partner. And by Waystar. Alex Barcelo, 10 points and 10 assists. But Brandon Averett scoring all the points here in the second half. He's up to 26 for the night. 26 points on 5 of 12 from 3. There's one of those 10 assists. Barcelo to Averett and out in the open court Averett taking it to the hole we've seen him in the second half accelerate by people and use his speed he's 9 of 17 from the field and 5 of 12 from 3 3 for 4 from the freeze line he's got 5 rebounds and, and how about Barcelo we, you know he said can he get a double double can he get to 10 assists and came back in this game here in the second half and they, they've really tried to defend Barcelo hard as he comes off of those screens they've doubled him they've hedged hard and all he's done is find his other teammates wide open. 10 points and 10 assists is a big deal. Weathers at the line. Converts the three-point play. 20 points tonight for Michael Weathers. Yeah, and Weathers is, is perfect. Six for six from the line. It's seven of 11. How efficient has Weathers been? He's had the ball in his hands. Four assists to add to that good scoring line for Weathers. Now Barcelo with it. Weathers comes out. Gideon George. Now here's Averett with the hot hand. Shot clock's at five. It's going to have to go up. Out come the Tigers. Now it's Weathers banging into Barcelo. Shot goes down. Weathers is going to go to the free throw line. And the foul will go against Barcelo. It is the night before the Boca Raton Bowl. For BYU and UCF, countdown to kickoff starts at 6 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. That's 4 o'clock here in the Rocky Mountains. All leading up to the Knights and the Cougars on ESPN. As bowl season picks up speed with their first prime time matchup. We're looking forward to that one. There's a lot of countdowns. There's, there's the countdown to tip off. There's the countdown to kickoff. There's the countdown to Christmas. This is the week of countdowns. Hey, Weathers stays perfect at the free throw line. They're seven for seven in this game. He's got 23 points and four assists. What a game for Weathers, the, the transfer from Oklahoma State. BYU's led by as many as 22, up by 14. Harward fights to the hoop, going to the free throw line, chance at a three-point play. He is so hard to defend when he... When you try to body him up down there, it's advantage Harward. And he has such a quick drop, step, and spin that, that when you body him up, he just spins right off of you and finishes. And this time he finishes hard through that foul. That's five fouls on number five. And so Nicholas will head to the bench. Harward, oh, go ahead. Harward now with 13 and, and, and five of seven from the field. Nicholas will... Uh, Back into action Saturday at LSU as this brutal road swing continues. A lucrative one, however, for Texas Southern. 83-67, 90 seconds to go. Weathers on the dish has it turned over. Then he gets it right back. Inside and off the glass goes Hopkins. Hopkins with eight. Assist number five for Weathers. And the other thing I appreciate appreciate about Weathers, those might be shorter than John Sinatra's shorts. <laughs> you notice that? Is he's yeah, they're unlike any other yeah, pair of shorts they're, they're on the, the floor. They're the shortest shorts I've seen in a long time. 
Averett up for another three. My goodness. 29 for Averett. Six of 13 from three-point land. Speaking of those shorts, John Stockton shorts, uh, Johnny Jones telling us about Barcelo. He goes, he reminds me of John Stockton's toughness. Yes. We thought, well, that's a that's a great compliment. Absolutely. Though the whistle is there piling up here with our crew, and the foul will go against Averett. And that's his third, and that will send Walker to the free throw line. All right, Zach Wilson tomorrow night. Last time for him in a BYU uniform, what do you think? Yeah, he's not just projected first round. He's projected top ten pick in the first round. Some projections have number two. To the Jets. To the Jets. Is that enough motivation to come back for your senior I mean, year? If I'm going to the Jets, and hey, I'm a New York guy, but I'm a New York Giants guy. Yeah, right? you can't be a Jets guy. No. If you're going to the Jets, you might just say, you know what, forget, forget that. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. But, uh, no, if you're if you're a top top ten pick, you got to go, right? Yeah. Like no, nobody would begrudge him going out. So it's too much money anymore yeah, it, for it, top it, ten. It picks. might be the last hurrah. Um, but but what a phenomenal junior season. He'll have all his weapons out there. Romney, Milne, Rex, Payu. And don't and don't fret, Cougar fans, because all, all those weapons will be back. Yeah. Even, even though Zach most likely moves on to the National Football League, all those weapons you just talked about all coming back next season uh, for for Baylor Romney or for Jacob Conover, whoever that guy is, or Hall. They've got great quarterbacks in the system. Yeah. It'll be a fun, interesting off season and spring and fall, and then and, and open most, up the season against Arizona and Las Vegas in September. Most importantly, they got a bunch of hosses coming back on their front line, yeah. which which is where they've been really good this year. Jerem Jordan will anchor our live coverage from Boca Raton tomorrow on Countdown. We'll get you right down there on the field, a full hour of prep for the Cougars, and uh, and then we'll turn it over to ESPN and see what happens. The, the biggest mystery right now is 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 Spencer still going to be here to do the post game show, yeah. or did he have to go to the hospital? We don't. That's, know. The, that's the thing that we're all waiting for. His wife expecting any moment. Thirty points tonight for Averett, the night to remember. This was a tough game for both teams in in the quiet arena. The Texas Sun that's been on the road forever. BYU's coming off that emotional win at San Diego State and and uh, you know, been one of those nights, but BYU gets it done. They win at 87 to 71. It didn't have to be pretty. It just had to be a win and move on to the next. And they shoot 48% from the field, 38% from three. A career night for Averett and for Barcelo. 10 assists and 10, and 10 points is a a great line for Alex Barcelo. 87-71 Cougars. Post-game shows coming up next here on BYU TV. If you build what, who will come?